Let's start a new game. We're just gonna do random races. Yeah, it come. It just it has like Armok and like all of the Dwarf Fortress names added in, and everybody's dwarves. Yeah, nine ninety five million races. Yes, that that's how many possible pre generated races it has. Um. Do you want to leave all the races that fill your world completely up to fate, or would you like to select from uh, another? Uh, mm, let's let's allow me to re-roll the races. I'm just curious as to what we get. Uh, let's do a 50-year playthrough. Choose how long you want your run to last for, um, and because uh, that that's like six hours at the speed I play. Or so, uh, choose the music you would like. Chat. What do we want? Do we want the classic theme, the 8-bit theme, theme, the menu theme, the calm theme, or the no music theme? I'm thinking we go with the calm theme. Four, four, okay. Uh, except currently selected music. Can you hear it? All right. <clears throat> so obviously we need to select a custom rank. What What is my preferred title, chat? We enter our preferred title. Anything we want. It could be king, queen, almighty, Steve, Mikey, boss, thug, stupid skull. Stupid could be pretty good. Eater of words, too many letters. I don't think there can be any spaces in this. This has to just be one word. Comrade, eh. Dwarf Lord, hmm. Orbs, I like it. I like the way you think. I like, you know, actually, I think Orb might be us. We might be Orb. <laughs> I, I think I think we might just be Orb. Orb per... <laughs> um, Giant's pretty good, too. Big Chungus. Orb list. Mm. Orber. I mean, Chungus is pop. We, we could just be Chungus. Hammerlord. Eh, pri Skullorbimus Prime. Skullorbimus Prime. Oh. Orblisk. I, I kind I kind of like Orblisk. Less than like an obelisk. Orbalisk. Did I spell that right? I think I did. Jim from the office. Well, I mean we get to pick our name first. Um So now uh enter so we we are Orbalisk. So now we get to um uh in 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 and well <laughs> Now we get to enter our preferred word for encounters where you'd normally be referred to as Lord, Lady, Thidey. Uh, this would be used as my Lord, my Lady. Uh, so make sure it fits. My orb. <laughs> I mean, obviously just orb, right? A beard. My beard. Hmm. <laughs> I mean, for that case, it would just be round. Right? Round. My round. <laughs> Orb. I kind of like just orb. Orb. My orb. It's always my orb in time. We could we could we could make a festival called my orb in time. You know that, right? right let's let's go with my orb. Um, enter your preferred word for encounters where you'd normally refer to as Mister, Mrs, or person. Mort. Ma ma mob. Herb. <laughs> just, just, just sphere. Hmm. I, I kind, I kind of like morb, like just morb. Herb. Hmm. Huh. Well, you know what's hysterical about all of this chat is there's actually an orb item in this game. <laughs> there, there actually is an orb item in this game. So when we find orbs, we're gonna have to have to collect all of the orbs. Um. Borb. Hmm. Orbson's pretty good. We're gonna go with Orbson. 
Okay, so wh what do we name ourselves, chat? Obviously, we name ourselves. What do we name ourselves? What is what is our name? What is the name of our glorious orb? Earth. <laughs> this is gonna get really fucking confusing. Ponder. I kind of like that actually. I think I think Brokely wins. Ponder. -er. Bernie Cinders. Uh, y y you want to make your own kingdom name or have one randomly generated? Uh, chat, what do we name our kingdom? What is the name of our, uh, king? Did, did I, did I misspell Ponderer? I mean, if I did, then we just live with that. Round Realm? Orbtonia. Oh, I did? Huh, well... We live with that now. Uh, here, I think I can actually rename myself. I'm, I'm pretty sure you can rename yourself, so I'll, I'll fix that later. Just the intro is going to be kind of hysterical. Or Bungalow. I like. Obviously, the Flatlands. There is a place called the Flatlands in this already, so that would be comp confusing. Globelandia. Hmm. Florb? Like, like flat orb? Spheres of Influence. Hmm. I kind of like Globe Landia. Globe Landia. All right, so we're just gonna play on. We're just gonna play on normal. I I I don't actually give a shit about making this game hard. This game doesn't shine when it's hard. Uh, we're gonna be normal. <clears throat> you are the ruler of the kingdom of Globe Landia, a once mighty empire. Fighting against the powerful rebellion of the Federal Kingslayer and the hordes of the bandits of loyal to Fenor, overlord of the bandit horde, as well as several minor bandit gangs who pester your lands. The world is vast and complex, and there is much to see and do, and, time, and little time to waste. From the fabled ancient lands to the blood-soaked arena, these lands call to be united under the flag of Glo of Globelandia. Naturally. Welcome to Worsim. But seriously, go go check out this this this, this game cuz this this game's super fucking cool. I'm going to be linking this in chat a lot over the next little bit. You are brought a list of races and peoples that exist in the world. They are <clears throat> The Ascended Oromancers, circle led by the overlord of Elderon, the Kingmaker. <clears throat> uh, they have six lands and 2,316 total population. There's the Ascended Oromancers. The Lexor, led by King Saren, the Cold-Eyed. They have 9,064 total population, four lands. And they are the civilization of the Ocean Underlings. The Horned Community, led by uh, Master Vnvnvnvnvnvnvnvnvnvnvnvnvnvnvnvnvnvnvnvnvnvnvnvnvnvnvnvnvnvnvnvnvnvnvnvnvnvnvnvnvnvnvnvnvnvnvnvnvnv
Was my father the previous ruler who was assassinated? Was my father the previous ruler who died of old age? Was my father the previous ruler who turned uh, mad and was jailed? Uh, I Did I win a the throne in a bet with the previous ruler? Am I a bandit warlord who took the throne uh, with my bandit army? Uh, did I steal the throne uh, with demonic trickery to serve the overlord? I'm not going to do that one because we've done that one too many times. Um, I Did I pull a fabled sword from a stone? Uh, did my father's village elder inherit the throne by accident? Uh, did my enslaved forces uh, overthrow the previous ruler? Uh, did I uh, win the throne in a tournament and find the new ruler by strength? Or did I lead a, leave a slave revolt and overthrow the slavers who ruled? Or is it a long story? Hi, Clino. How are you? So, you know what? Um, I actually, I wonder if I even... Let's see. I literally can't make a poll that big through Twitch. So we're just going to have to eyeball this. Four seems pretty popular. Seems to be like four or seven. So I'm going to do a poll between four and seven. Option four or op option seven, chat. You have one minute. I, I'm not going to lie. No username. 12 is actually a really long story. It's actually a really, really, really long story. <laughs> it was like a 45-minute read the one time we did it. I mean, it's a long story. It literally just gives you a really, really, really long, dumb backstory that just picks a random one eventually. I swear to God, if you guys actually tied this. Ooh, okay, four just barely crosses the line. No, it doesn't randomly generate. It's a pre it's a very, very, very long pre-written story that picks a random outcome of one of the twelve. Or eleven, I guess. So I won the throne in a bet with the previous ruler. The previous <laughs> Here we are. Um <clears throat> the previous orbalisk had run the realm into debt and crossed paths with you, a wealthy gambler and opportunist. You offered your entire wealth of gold against the title of Orbalisk with a coin flip. The desperate or Orbalisk took the risk and lost and then surrendered the realm to you in a move that became the talk of the realm. It is hailing outside. Um, so we get uh, a bunch of extra gold from my personal reserve. Uh, but our bank vault is empty. The country has no gold. Everybody hates me. And a third of your soldiers and peasants have deserted and joined the rebels. Um, so that's great. <laughs> uh, you are invited to the royal crowning ceremony where you can learn of the newly inherited realm. And of course, you are the ruler of this kingdom. So you can also ignore it. Um, yeah, we, we are poor Landia right now, Brokely. Um, so we are going to go to the ceremony. <clears throat> uh, you enter what is now your throne room for the first time. There is a small crowds of people who are gathered to see the new Orbalisk. As, uh, <laughs> as you take a moment to observe the room, the High General of Globelandia approaches. And General Gohorn Pachner says, Greetings to you. I hope you are well, my orb. <laughs> Fuck me. Uh, I, that's not going to be get easy to say at any point. Um, I, I shall crown you as one, the one true orbalisk of Globelandia. 
You're gained, you gained this title through a bet with the previous Orbalisk, who is now poor and fortuneless. Though you have revolted against your crowning, uh, we as noble servants must crown, uh, the, of the crown must stand behind you. Though you may have revolted against your crowning. Wait, how did I revolt against my crowning? Okay. Um, you are now the Orbalisk of Gor Globelandia. I pray your reign is long. Now we must do as we always have done, as always shall do, and gather your coins ready. And everyone uh, in the throne room gives me a single coin. We get 39 coins. And then he brings, and that brings our ceremony to an end. I, Gorin Pachner, General of Globelandia, advise you on the matters of war and military, and I shall serve you loyally, that I swear. He also kind of sucks, so we'll probably fire him pretty quickly. Now you will most certainly know uh, to which the state of the realm Globelandia's five territorial holdings make us a threat to others. The kingdom's personal army consists of 333 peasants, because a third of them left, and uh, 133 soldiers, and five loyal knights who serve your cause. That's all for the military matters. As for the realm's finances, well, the kingdom's coffers were wiped out by our last king, so there's no gold in our coffers or bank vault. Uh, but your 12,500 gold in your personal coffers uh, is all we have. My Orbalisk, uh, now that you are crowned, you may speak to the old Kroll, if you wish, for any tutoring on matters of the realm. If you are unsure of what to do, I would highly recommend it. Uh, though, if you would like to discuss it later, you may do so by returning to the throne room. Okay, so chat, we're going to speak to the old crow, crow right? We're, we're going to speak to the old crow, and I'm going to show you the best abbreviated tutorial of all time. This is one of my favorite features of this video game. So he says, Hello, my orb. Prepare yourself for some good old tutoring. Firstly, I must ask... How you'd prefer me to explain these things? I could give you a full explanation with every detail, a fair explanation with, with less of the relevant detail, or if you wish, I could give you a simple version that a mere child could comprehend. So I, I know how to play this game. I've played it quite a bit. So we're going to do the simple version. Um, if you are playing this for the first time, I would recommend the, one of the first two. But we're going to do the third one, um, which is uh, explore menu, do things, you win. Uh, top menu, show gold, show lands is help. Uh, hire men, fight men, you win. Okay? Capiche? Um, uh, move on to the next section. Uh, hire mercs, kill enemies, you win. Uh, hire staff, staff work, you win. Uh, make friends, friends trade, you win. Uh, make laws, imprison everyone, you win. Uh, kingdom upgrades, obviously you, you buy buildings, use them, you win. Uh, hire steward, ignore throne room, you win. Uh, bet gold, your guy wins, you win. <laughs> Uh, store gold, savings grow, you win. Uh, build buildings, visit them, you win. Uh, read reports, understand more, you win. And explore land, discover all, you win. Um, finally, enter and invade enemy, you win. You get it? <laughs> this will all be on the test, Bobtron. There's a, there's a written and a practicum. Damn, seems you can't lose. I mean, as long as we do all the things, we win, naturally. This looks like Text Crusader Kings. It's kind of like Text Crusader Kings crammed together with Text Mountain Blade. <laughs> Kinda. <laughs> um, a winner is you. A you, a you is a win. Um, so I uh, know I'm done with the stupid tutorial. Uh, very well. Take care, of my orb. <laughs> God, this game's phenomenal. Uh, all right. So this is the video game. Um. We can, uh, we can see our stats at the top, uh, and then we have the 12 options. And then uh, this particular run that we've set up is uh, 50 years. Chat came up with it, not me, Hops. It's their fault. Um, we have 50 years to, uh, to get through. And uh, exactly. You, if you lose, you, you had fun, you win. Yeah. Hope Dorf went well. Dorf went great, Tyler. Now we're playing just as good of a video game. A weird video game, but just as good of a video game. I, you know, honestly, this is this is also a game where losing is fun, Orange. I, 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 War Sim is a game where when you lose, I, it, it's it's just like, well, you get a score. Like, that. that's it, right? All right, so, hmm. 
I kind of just want to start off by putting some shit in the bank. But maybe we'll do that at the end. Uh, you know, we're a gambler, right? So I think the first thing we're gonna do is we're, we're gonna go to the we're gonna go to the throne room. Where we we are a brand new king, or sorry, a brand new herbalisk, might be. Um what happened to the 39 coins? Good question. What did happen to the 39 coins? Maybe they kept them. Um, they took their coins back. Uh, I'm going to go to the throne room. Uh, and then we're going to go bet all of our money on <laughs> on the arena. Naturally. Because that, that's what normal people do. All right. Welcome to your throne room. Here you can deal with visitors from across your realm and beyond. As as time goes on, you may find went... what? Oh, <laughs> loud. Um, <laughs> startled me. Sorry. Uh, here, here you can deal with visitors from across your realm and beyond. As time goes on, you may find the number of visitors swelling to huge. Lines. As a ruler, you may choose to deal with every last visitor, but if the task becomes too monotonous, you should look to hiring a steward. Stewards will deal with any visitors left unseen by you at the end of the turn. Every time you run out of money, you go gamble. Sounds about right. Naturally, yeah. Well, I mean, it's a very profitable industry in this game. Of course, exactly. Recognize. Recognize understands what's going on here. We won this title by gambling. Damn right, we're going to do more gambling. Um, so be careful who you hire uh, to be your stewards. Stewards can have uh, one of a number of different traits, and they affect how they manage uh, and deal with your throne room visitors. Xenophobe, blah 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 Money grabber will never spend money. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, so we're going to send in the first visitor. As you enter your throne room and take your place on the throne of Globlandia, you are told that there is... Uh, actually, hold on. I'm going to... Just gonna back out of here real quick, and I'm going to go to manage staff recruit, hire mercenaries. Where's the one? I know that there's, there is a way to change my name, <laughs> and I and my rank and everything. And I just want to see where that is. Rain. It might be under. Actually, maybe it's under change the laws of the land. Others. Ah. Oh. Uh, 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 uh. Change the minister. Rename the kingdom. Declare a different number for our current year. Oh, yeah, mm. oh, no. Doesn't look like I can actually change my name. Well, I can rename the kingdom. But I'm going to, of course, turn on the most important rule chat, which is force everybody to wear hats. Um, the scribe notes down your demands on a scroll and hands off the action to them. And the people are upset at a loss of freedom, but are happy that they all have cool hats to wear. And this is this one's kind of balanced. We've 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 caused the most important law, which is everybody is now forced to wear hats. Um, are the hats spherical? Fuck me, I wish. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to enact longer harvest hours, which is minus two public opinion. Scribe notes down your demands on a scroll and hands off the action to them. You have enabled uh, longer harvests, and you will gain more during harvest, but your people will suffer exhaustion. That's fine. Um... And they'll forgive me later when I remove them slightly. And uh, I kind of want to turn on fugitive, out forgive outlaws and allow outlaws back into society, but we'll see how bad things go. Um, and then, you know, I can turn on taxes. Uh, we can uh, remove gambling tax, which is naturally something I'm going to do uh, eventually once we actually have money. Um, and then there's banking taps of tax. Uh, we could uh, end land tax, which gives me a very big popularity boost, but kills my money. Uh, we could subsidize the arena, but it costs me money. Uh, we could subsidize the militia, but it costs me money. We could tax, 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 taxes, tax of tax. And so you tax people's tax, and more tax equals more tax tax, um, which is very important. Uh, we can back out of that, too. Uh, but yeah, let, let's go back to the throne room. Let, let's do that. We're going to send in the first visitor. You are visited by a, a particularly ugly peasant man who claims to have come in the possession of a basket full of magical fruit. He claims that they can be fed to soldiers to make them even stronger and asks 50, 50 gold for it. He calls it Blue Tree and claims it is from a magical farm. A single fruit? That might actually be a really good price. I can tax the taxes tax, yes. 
Can I make this realm into Team Fortress? Uh, no, but everybody's going to be wearing hats. I can't make them wear hats on their hats, unfortunately. I'm going to um, buy the fruit. Uh, you later discovered that these so-called magic fruits are just apples with a blue coat of dye. God damn it! I got scammed. Um, you are visited by a wise man who says he has some advice to share. Well, gladly. I'd love to hear it. Death Eaters are a dangerous foe. Kill them. Before they grow strong, too strong to stop. How is this, um, chat, one through six, how do you feel about this advice? I'm curious to see how psychopathic chat is today. <laughs> um, lot, lot, you're indifferent? Okay. Wise man leaves. Send in the next visitor. Uh, you were visited by an armed man who says he will join your army for a fee of 10 gold. That's actually not a bad price if he's a decent soldier. So Actually, that's, that's a good price. Plus one, plus one soldier. Fuck yeah. Um, send in the next guest. You are visited by a wood gatherer who claims one of your soldiers farted on his crops and demands compensation for his smelly wheat. How do you feel about this man, chat? How could he? I know, right? How could he? R refuse his request to the dungeons with him? Oh, no, it's a landslide. Okay, well, the prisons the, the prisons begin to fill. Plus one prisoner. Uh, the wood gatherer looks at you angrily and hisses. Uh, plus one prisoner. Uh, you are visited by a merchant who says that he that one of his shop assistants is set to be executed in your prison and begs you free him. What do you say, chat? To the dungeons? <laughs> Send him to the dungeons with him! Uh-oh. We're a, a prison-happy gambler. Hmm. Well, actually, man, there's some people who say free the man. Oh, chat. You know, I think, I think that uh, freedom might be winning here. Free the man. Minus one prisoner. The man bows to you with a grin on his face and then leaves. Uh, 16 people left. You are visited by an insane beggar who shouts, I don't know if you can go where do I go when I die. Well, you know, it's hopeless. It's something on his eyeballs. How do you feel about this man, chat? To the dungeons with him. Uh, remove him from court. Uh, yeah. Don't like his voice kill. <laughs> Can we promote him? Can I Unfortunately, I can't hire this insane man. Chad just seems to want him gone, so get out! Man says farewell for now. As he's being thrown out. Um, send in the next man. Uh, you are visited by an old man who asks if, he, if you could spare a few coins for his 15 kids who are starving. Fifteen kids? Old man? Fifteen! Chad's trying to make me broke. Ooh, this is like, this one's pretty even. This one's, pre this one's pretty even. Uh-oh. Are you guys really trying to make me broke? <laughs> Motherfuckers! I've only got so much gambling money! I, I think I'm gonna give him nothing. <laughs> Old man says, thank you for talking with me. And he leaves. Uh, a traveling game master visits your court and invites you to play a popular tavern game called Sudden Death. Uh, he says that the game costs 20 gold per play and the prize is double your 20 gold. He uh, plays the Western rules and he has 70 gold to bet with. You have 12,440 gold. Well, obviously we're gamblers, chat, so naturally we have to play. The game master flips a coin. It lands heads. He goes first. The game is currently in round one. There are nine dice remaining. It is currently the Game Master's turn. He rolls the dice. Die two lands on six and is removed from play. Die four lands on six and is removed from play. I roll the dice. I did not roll a six. We lose our gold. Gambler gets the money. Oh, sorry. I, I I know what the rules are. Uh, how do you play a game of sudden death? The player chosen to go first rolls the dice, and whichever dice land on six are removed from play. 
In each turn, the active player must get at least one six to remain in the game. A player who does not get a six loses. If a player clears all of the dice in one turn, he wins. So if you roll all sixes, you win. If uh, you don't roll any sixes, you're out. Does that make sense? Pretty simple. Pretty simple. Let's play. Let, let's play again. To the dungeon with it. I mean, we we could. We roll the dice. We 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 remove five from play. The game is currently around two. Two more dice are removed from play. It's our turn to roll the dice, and um, <clears throat> we lose twenty more gold. Hmm. Motherfucker. I could just force him to give me all of his gold. Or we could hire him. Hire this guy? I. Are, do you really want me to hire him, chat? Chat wants me to hire him. Uh, hire... <laughs> That name, though. Uh, the Game Master says he will work for 33 gold and tells you his skill level as Game Master is 66. <laughs> Hire... <laughs> Hire Dumbledog because <laughs> have... Clearly we have to hire Dumbledog. Okay, we're hiring Dumbledog. The seasoned veteran. Yes. I mean, look at his hat. You can tell he's very seasoned. <laughs> this guy deserves the kingdom. I I mean, he has better better odds than we do, apparently. <laughs> you can't turn down a good GM. I mean, this game just has randomly generated names. I mean, this game generated Dumbledonk for this. Wow. Okay. Um, send in the next visitor. Okay, we got 13 more. Uh, the guards bring forward a man who's being accused of sleeping with skeletons. What? How dare you sleep with Skelly Chan? Um, ex Spain? Uh, she was my wife. I miss her dearly. All right, chat. What do we do with this, man? Skeleton, not skeletons. <laughs> Release him? I mean, honestly? <laughs> That's kind of divided here. Understandable in the day and age? Honestly, I would just release the guy. So I think that's what I'm going to do. Uh, the man leaves with a sad expression on his face. Yes, I would too. Um, next, you are visited by a jester's son who says, Hello, Orb. I've come to read you a joke on behalf of my father who's too sick to come. He says that the Orbalisk should be made to laugh from time to time. I guess we shall listen to your joke, sir. Get ready for a really bad pun, chat. I convinced a pirate crap cap crapton? captain to crash his ship into a huge dock. He crumbled, crumbled, crumbled under peer pressure. Um, I'm also going to make this slightly bigger so things stop like... Please. Ooh, you suck. Yep. They do that. All right. Um... <clears throat> He seems to be awaiting uh, your response to the joke. Chat, how do you feel about this joke? <laughs> Just like, hire this man! You know you're going to bankrupt me by hiring all of this staff, right? <laughs> it was pretty terrible. Um... I'm going to go against chat's decision here and just say three. That joke was terrible. The jester's son nods and leaves. Um, 
your head diplomat, the old crow, approaches and requests uh, his appointment ends with you as he is done wor working. What? What? <laughs> I... I mean, dude wants to go to... <laughs> Apparently, my old crawl is retiring. Um... You know, this is actually kind of a big one. I'm gonna... Hmm. We could just hire somebody to replace him. We do have to pay him, for clarity's sake, mechanically. I think I'm just gonna let him go. Bye, old crawl. We no longer have a diplomat. Well, that sucks. We get to hire a new diplomat. <laughs> um, you were visited by a local seer. Well, that's good. I'm a blinder. Uh, who says he can help you with your exploration and discovery for a fee, of course. He's wearing a fish on his head, chat. <laughs> he's, he's got a fish on his head. <laughs> Pay for the seer's services? I mean, we don't have a diplomat, so... Maybe. But he also does have a fish on his head, so I don't know if I trust him. Gotta respect the hat, I, I suppose. Uh, we now have one additional exploration jet. So that's actually not bad for, for early game. Uh, the seer takes the gold and begins chanting and chanting and fills the room and is so loud and focused you feel as though you are in a trance. The seer stops for a moment and then snaps back and reveals some information that he will assist you in exploring. All right, uh, on to the next one. You are visited by a wise farmer who claims that one of your soldiers lost money, lost money to him in a bet and fled, and he wants his due. As a gambler, I refuse this request. Um, you, you are visited by a hunter who asks to join your army as his farmland was ruined by goblins. Fuck yeah, man. You also have a fish hat. Nice. Uh, seven more people are waiting. Uh, you are visited by an armed man who says that he will fight you for a fee of six gold. Okay. Uh, once that's, that's a nice cheap soldier. Uh, your guards are, bring forward a man accused of grave digging. Well, I mean, obviously we should ask for him to explain himself. What? <laughs> Orbalisk says, an Orbalisk does what must be done. I'm going to ask the arresting guard his statement. And the guard informs you he, he is doubtlessly guilty. My orb. Okay, chat, what do we want to do with this man? And sleeping with... No, he's just grave digging. He's just digging up graves. Uh, I'm seeing some to the dungeons. It seems to be pretty divided between execute and dungeons, but I'm, uh, maybe it's it's leaning it's leaning execute from the looks of things. Hmm. Hmm. I miss streaming this game. We should stream this game more often. This game's good. Um, well, execute this bandit scum. The man does not flinch, and he is quickly killed on the spot. Five more people, and then we can go gamble. Um. After, actually, after we hire a new diplomat, because we need to hire a new diplomat first. You are visited by a southeastern orc reaver lord from the Copper Old Clan who seeks refuge with you after having been sentenced to death. Huh. That's quite the name. A southeastern orc reaver lord. That must be like a high-ranking military person. We want to know why he was sentenced to death? I tried to set up a wheat-based pyramid. <laughs> He's an NFT shill guy! A wheat-based uh, pyramid scheme. I mean... Fucking... Who cares? <laughs> I mean... Like, execute him? I mean, so here's what we can actually do here. We can execute him and gain cred with this faction, or we can keep him and lose cred with that faction, but gain a powerful soldier, basically. I'm going to accept him. It's not like he murdered a thousand people or something. Um, the Southeastern Orc Reaver uh, bows to you. Uh, we got four people left. A trinket merchant enters your court and asks if you'll be willing to flip a coin with him for a wager. I mean, 
He's got 740 gold to bet. I I mean, I, if I at the rate the chat's going, uh, Bob, I definitely will need a finance minister. Can we set up a... God, I wish. <laughs> Frog, God, I wish. Uh, three? 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 Oh, oh, okay. Um, chat, heads or tails? You both put your bet of gold forward. Chat never loses? I don't know about that. We flip tails, um, and it lands on heads, we lose. <laughs> um, do we flip again? I have a question for you, though. Uh, tell me about the coin you're using. It says it's a sacred... It's a scratched-up gold, old gold coin. Why do you gamble? Well, a little trinket market isn't great. If I can make a little extra by gambling, why not? Let's flip again. Heads or tails, chat? I'm seeing a lot of twos. Poll? You guys want to do it in a poll? Okay, we'll do it in a poll. All right, there you go. Poll's up. Poll's up for Harambe. Let's go. I'm not above dead memes, clearly. Keep going, Tails, you'll win eventually. Yeah, that's just how odds work, right? This is a great game for streaming. It's hysterical, isn't it? I, yeah, eventually we'll make him go broke. Or if we do go broke, we can just steal the money from him and, and feel bad about it. Too soon? You Really? <laughs> Really? Really? I don't know about that. So, um, little fun side note for, about this game. Um, on Itch, uh, the developer actually posted all of the generators for this game, uh, for free. So, all of the faces, all of the races, all of that stuff... They're all free. The, the hero name generator, the combat unit generator, the independent kingdom name generator, the flag generator, uh, the phrase generator, the currency generator, the weapon generator, the building generator, the uh, random names tool, all of that. It's all free. You can go download it right there. So if you want to like generate these faces for yourself, you can do that. Um, so it looks like... I didn't actually see the results. View results. Uh, Tails won, so we're going to pick two. Hey! Oh. Oh. Hmm. I'm starting to think this man is cheating, chat. I'm going to make him give me all of his gold. A trinket merchant gives you the gold and leaves sobbing. Minus two public opinion, but we get our money back. Uh, the trinket merchant travels around and spreads word of your open robbery of his coffers, causing outrage among traders. <laughs> People still like us. Um, you are visited by an old man who asks if you could spare a few coins as he's having hard times. You know what? We need some public opinion. I'm going to give him one or four coins. Um... You are visited by an insane laborer who steps forward and says, My orb, I have something important to tell you. He takes a moment and says, You smell! Before running out the door laughing. How do we respond to this chat?
Son of a... I know, right? <laughs> God, God damn, dirty, little, insane. Let him run? Okay. Um, we have one more visitor. You are visited by a traveling bard. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> and he asks to show you the singing ways of the old orcish. I am a beginner, he says. I shall play you a little song. I mean, obviously, we want to hear the song. Obviously. <laughs> Chad already wants to hire him. Um, <clears throat> plus one relation with the Musicians Guild. And the grunter nods and prepares to play a song for us. Are you ready, chat? Are you listening? Are your ears peeled? Well, I hope not, because then they might be a fruit. Um, why is it making no sound? Couldn't hear you. Now I'm actually wondering if it's like disabled. <laughs> uh, well, it played no sound. So I'm going to say that that was a bad performance. Um, remove, normally it plays like a randomly generated song. Did I have sound music disabled? I thought I, I thought I enabled that. Uh, well, obviously, because we didn't hear that, that was uh, totally acceptable, and we'll remove you from my court. Whoops. Um, let's back out and uh, jump over to game settings and extras, and uh, go to settings, and... Oh, okay. Well... Wait, what? What? Why? Why? Okay. Um, oops. <laughs> anyway, um, so there's 10 fights happening at the arena. But uh, first, let's go manage some staff. Um, we need a diplomat. <laughs> like, stat. Um, just So currently, our, our, uh, our hired staff members are Gorin Peckner and, uh, Peckner and Dumbledunk the season veteran. <laughs> so we're going to hire a new uh, diplomat. Uh, there are three potential head diplomats that are sent to your court, and you may speak to each of them and learn their skills and talents. We have Lancel the Noble, Vorstag the Volunteer, and Eldron Spikeshoot. Okay? We're going to speak with Lancel first. I am Lancel the Noble. He's wearing a hat. I have been the head diplomat for some of the greatest rulers. If you don't hire me, some other lord will. I expect... 214 gold per year. This person is a member of nobility. He's kind of expensive. Okay. Second is Vorstag the Volunteer. Hello. I have a top hat. My name is Vorstag the Volunteer. I am an expert of the realm diplomacy, and I will serve you for no payment. This person is a volunteer, meaning they will work for free. Okay, so we have a volunteer. Um, and then the third one is Eldron Spike Shoot. Okay. Uh, greetings, my name is Eldron Spikeshoot. I am an ad I am an adept of the in the realm of diplomacy, and I would be my honor to serve you. I request pay of ninety three gold per year. You know, honestly, looking at the skill level over there on the right, I'm taking that goddamn volunteer. That's like uh, a pretty good dice roll. Yeah, like, literally, like, he's almost as good as the noble guy and free. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm taking this guy. Hey, this, hell yeah. Um, let's, uh... Hmm. Always trust the guy with the top hat. Naturally. Definitely. Let's check out court jesters. Um, <clears throat> there are three potential court jesters sent to your court. You may speak with each of them to learn their skills and talents. We have Arvr... The Skull Laden Mountain Guard, Galecki the Bloodied Bones, or Sir Poran the Brain. <laughs> hmm. We need champions? Uh, not quite yet. Yes, they do, Gristoth, and then you can execute them. Um, 
so let, let's try this, to read this first one. Hello, I'm Avis Galladen. I am, I can fart in three colors and I specialize in non-orc jokes. It would be a source of great pride to work for you and I request payment of 42 gold per year. Okay, so that's the first one. Uh, this, he's, he's got skill level uh, 139, higher cost of 42. Second is Glecky. Um, honk, honk, I'm Glecky, the bodied bones. Uh, I won't make you laugh. My jokes aren't like that, but you will be slightly amused. I specialize in everything. I promised my mother I would serve you. She called me a fool. I said thank you, and I expect payment of 63 gold per year. <laughs> okay, so that's that's that guy. Um, he's actually pretty skilled, damn. Um, and then, uh, Sir Porin the Brainless. Greetings, I am named Sir Porin the Brainless. I once made a stat- a statue smile. <laughs> and I specialize in all kinds of jokes. I traveled three days to serve you. I request 79 gold per year. I don't really want to hire a, you know, um, any of these guys. <laughs> I just kind of wanted to read who we had as options. All right, um, let, let's back up. Um, let's uh, let, let's uh, let, let's uh, let, let, let's hmm. let's go arrange diplomacy. <clears throat> let's go to the independent territories and see who we're at war with. Uh, your diplomat brings you a list of all of the known independent kingdoms and territories. You may look into each of them and learn their race and culture and lore, as well as conduct diplomacy with them. Let's go to the clan lands first. The clan lands of the deep homunculi. Um, your head diplomat, uh, uh, Voltag the Volunteer, tells you the diplomatic action with the clan lands of the deep homunculi is not possible due to their lack of civility and their savage nature. He confirms, however, they seem to tolerate us. Well, that's good. Um, which means I can look into their leader. They have the great chief, Cruel the Headstrong. He's stronger than a normal soldier but they're neutral. All right. Uh, then we got the Copper Old Clan. The Copper Old Clan are run by Chief Krulzar the Woodcutter. Uh, they're the Southeastern Orcs. They seem to kind of like us. Uh, we can um, trade with them. Uh, they We're actually, like, kind of neutral. Um, we can ask them for a trade agreement, and Chief Krulzar the Woodcutter doesn't fully understand what a trade deal means, but an advisor tells him that it makes money and money is good, so he is happy. Well, that's excellent. So we are now trading with them. Um, let's look at their leader information. He's stupid, apparently. Acor according to this, he is very stupid. So, orcs. Um, we're not a powerful enough to vassalize them. We have the Horned Community, um, of uh, run by the leader Master Vabumquiz. Uh, they are the Brooding Woodlands Pig Folk. Uh, their le leader information... The horned horn community, or, or, or rather, they're, they're, they're known for their love of muck and sludge, and they tend to be fat and have large pink snouts. Uh, they are a strange folk, not quite human, but a little less animalistic than its people are known for producing. Uh, great numbers of young, and its uh, people live among the woodlands. Uh, they are a group of mostly civilian folk, and their famed words are, We eradicate how you fought. We eradicate okay sure um trade and diplomacy uh we ask them for a trade agreement the horned community are pleased to trade with you and they uh, you arrange a deal to be done um let's look at their leader information and they, they don't have a specific oh i guess they like don't really have a, a leader they're like a weird group like that um then we have lexor uh, run by King Saren the Cold-Eyed. Uh, their leader information is, uh, they are neutral. Look at that face. Um, trade and diplomacy. Faction relation is kind of low. We are now trading them with them. Cool. And then lastly, we have the Ascended, uh, Aeromancers. Uh, they, they also kind of like us. Their, their leader information, they are neutral. Uh, the kingdom information... Known to be practice aura and magic, they have great affinity for nature and can detect intent of others and are known to be quite solitary. Its people are said to have ascended from the common way of existing and now experience combined shared bliss of higher level of uh, intelligence that is Im 
unimaginable to those outside of their race. They believe in righteousness and good, and they lead by example. They are pan-dimensional peoples whose intelligence knows no bounds, and they're uh, in this dimension. And they're famed our words, companions, sisters, swim, honor. Huh! I like these guys. They also seem kind of strong, so we should try and trade with them. Um, you are now have a trade agreement with the uh, Oromancer's Circle, and uh, they are pleased to trade with you. Um, they seem kind of strong. All right, so we are now trading with everybody. Um, the Globelandian Militia. Uh, you call forth the head of the militia's Cutter Flesh, flesh Snatcher, who arrives and is eager to hear what you have to say. I can give them order. Oh, interesting. I actually straight up have, like, a militia. Interesting. Uh, so now there's, like, the various goblin groups, the rebels, the bandit horde, who we're at war with by default, and all that jazz. Um, so now we can go to the arena. You enter the little arena. It is a sizable venue where warriors come to battle and locals play. Uh, to pay to watch and bet. The arena is owned uh, by a loyal local named Leo Frick, the observant grave filler the second. An entry to watch, the entry fee to watch a fight is eight bucks. However, Leo Frick, the observant grave filler the second, has informed his staff not to charge you any fees out of respect. Okay, uh, we're going to uh, bet on a fight, chat room. So now is the very important question. Who do we bet on? Deep, the Deep Humunculi Whelp or the Blessed Deep Humunculi Troublemaker? So it's a gladiatorial battle between the Deep Humunculi Whelp or the Blessed Deep Humunculi Troublemaker. Oh, also, for those of you who give me money for uh, sound commands... That one is, that sound command is literally ripped directly from this game. <laughs> We're going with two? Okay. How much gold are we betting on him? The maximum is 5,000. I'm just curious to know how much you guys think we should bet. Three thousand, five thousand. 2,000, 1K, 1337, 500. I think, well, I, I saw 3,000. Let's go with 3,000. You ready, chat? The crowd chant in near unison while the fighters emerge from the gates and pace towards each other. Weapons in hand, the crowd wars, and the fighters near each other, and the fight begins. The blessed deep humunculi tr troublemaker blocks a strike from the deep humunculi whelp. Okay, so it looks like the whelp has more HP than the troublemaker. Some members of the crowds hold up a banner with the words, We bet on deep humunculi whelp. Fuck you, crowd. <clears throat> the blessed deep humunculi troublemaker trips over his feet. Uh-oh. But the blessed deep humunculi troublemaker gets two fast hits in. Probably tripped and then, like, stabbed upwards. Um... Seems like it. Um, the blessed deep humunculi troublemaker stabs the humunculi whelp in the chest. And the blessed deep humunculi troublemaker uh, and the deep humunculi whelp stop fighting and shake hands. Uh, the blessed deep humunculi troublemaker then swings for the deep humunculi whelp, but it slips and misses. And uh, the deep humunculi whelp uh, swings wide and lightly catches uh, the deep humunculi troublemaker and uh, does 3 HP to him. Ooh. And uh, it seems that the uh, deep humunculi troublemaker slices deep into the homunculi's whelp's head, and it instantly kills him. Ding dong, the whelp is dead. The deep humunculi whelp has been vanquished and is forever in defeat because he's dead. And the crowd wars and chants for the blessed deep humunculi troublemaker who leaves victorious. There are nine fights left. Dwarf Fortress looks different. It's fine, don't worry about it. You'll figure it out. Um, we're gonna, we're gonna once again bet on a fight chat. <clears throat> Actually, let's see who the grand champion is. 
Igalf the Devilish is currently the grand champion of Globelandia. Having recently assumed his title, he has no wins to his name, but will soon fight his debut fight as the grand champion. Ooh, do we want to bet on the grand champion's fight, or do we want to keep betting on the normal uh, entertainment for the evening? Do you want? Do we want to talk with some patrons? Okay, let's talk with some patrons. Uh, wait, wait, which is the option? Let's speak with a local patron. <clears throat> Some of these fights, fans have no respect. I saw a man toss a whole basket full of glass bottles at a fighter he betted against. Of course, he had to drink those bottles to get them empty, and his aim was off, but he ended up killing the fighter. He betted on instead of the one he wa who was, he was ir ironically both, uh, sorry, instead of the one he betted on who was ironically both winning and the favorite. He was caught by the guards, and now the rest of his days, uh, and now, uh, and, and now the rest of his days to think about the situation, so the silver linings, I suppose. That was hard to read because of how it looped around. Uh, let's speak with another patron. Sometimes the weaker foe gets lucky. I've seen it happen. Uh, what else do we have? Uh, over time, as Hall of Fame becomes filled with real greats, you'll very rarely see a change happen. But when it does, it's often a grand old time. Champ fight. All right, let's let's do a champ fight. Bet on the grand champion, I think. Uh, who do we want to bet on, chat? Ed Gelf the Devilish or Jora, the wispy armsman? So because neither of these are actually the grand champion. No, I I just I I, I made a law, Frog for Hire, that everybody has to wear hats. So the options are unfortunately kind of limited. So it's illegal to not wear hats, so they wear whatever they get. And a lot of them just have fish, apparently. No bias here? Hmm. Seems like bias. I don't know. You're happy with the hats? I mean, you guys all have hats, in case you didn't know. <laughs> or a lot of people in chat have hats. Maybe not everybody, but most of you in chat have hats. Hell no to the champion, he got no kills. Hmm. Chat seems to be leaning two. So I'm going to go with two. Uh, we can bet up to 2,000, so I'll bet the maximum bet. <clears throat> so we're betting against the champion, chat. Underdogs. Underdogs. <clears throat> the crowd scream and shout as the two fighters emerge and begin the long walk to the center of the arena. The moment is tense and they get ever closer until they are almost in reach. The crowd waits eagerly for the first blow. Some members of the crowd hold up a banner with the words, We bet on Ego of the Devilish. Holy shit, he's got no HP. <laughs> I'm... Mm. Okay. Um, Ego of the Devilish blocks and hits Jorah the Wispy Armsman. Ego of the Devilish kicks Jorah the Wispy Armsman. And uh, hits him again. Ego of the Devilish tries to attack but misses. Jorah the Wispy Armsman tries to attack but falls over his own feet, and uh, Igelf the Devilish gets a huge and fast hit on Jorah the Wispy Armsman. But it seems like Jorah the Wispy Armsman swings and lightly, lightly hits uh, Igelf the Devilish, and uh, Igelf the Devilish swings and lightly hits Jorah the Wispy Armsman, but Jorah the Wispy Armsman strikes clumsily, but manages to stab the Devilish. And I get four grand. We win. I bet. I I bet against um the the champion Bob. Sorry about the ads. Uh, I I bet against the champion and 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 we won. Did. Also, could someone help Bob out with the ads? Just saying. Uh. Anyway. Uh. Igelf, the the devilish is vanquished forever in defeat, and the mighty grand champion is now more. Uh. Is no more. Is now more. Now more? Long live the new grand champion! <clears throat> well, uh, there are nine more scheduled fights we could bet on, which is a really good way of making money in the early game of this. So, um, we, we're just going to watch one fight because I'm just kind of... Ooh, we get to see an Ascended ne Necromancer fight? An Ascended Oromancer? Okay, so it turns out Ascended Oromancer's very strong. Um, so we should definitely... Oh... 
Never mind. The arena is not accepting bets at the moment because we bet as much money as we could. But we can speak with the uh, owner of the, the owner of the arena. Uh, we could watch all of the fights all at once, uh, which I think we'll do. Now you will have the immediate entire fight played all in one immediate screen instead of a play-by-play. What? Weird. Why does it do that? All right. Anyway, um, because we're done betting, there's really no more reason to do that. Uh, and uh, Claiborne, thanks for gifting us up to Bob. And welcome back for uh, another of the billionth months, Bob. Uh, we're going to go explore the realm, chat. Where do you guys want to go? Do you want to go to the uh, the northern lands? The eastern grasslands? The southern lands or the western lands? Where do we want to go exploring? Seems to be north. We will ride to magnetic north. So you remember earlier in, in the year for this turn, uh, we did uh, look for more. Or we, we did pay that guy for more chances to explore. So we get four chances instead of three. Quid. Thanks for the third month. It's, I'm an orb. Have you? I'll have you know, Quid. We're, we're my orb, actually, because chat said that I'm not a lord. I'm, I'm an orb, apparently. Um. So, we're here to ponder orb and be orbed. It's a or or or, or orbinary thing. Anyway, uh we're we're going to uh explore. You are hit by a harsh cold wind and discover nothing. The north is a cold place. Through mild, though mild compared to the rest of the north, this place is filled with forts and places of violence such as Brawler's Pit and the Th Thick Blood Tavern. Explore again. The cold northern winds lead you astray. We explore again. We seem to have found a little bit of space. We found the slaver's fort. And uh, you wander across a patch of barren land that could be made more arable if you had the means to terraform it. We gain one arid land, er, uh, useless land. So now we can go to the slaver's fort. So how bad of a person are we? We could buy slave soldiers. We could also attack them. <laughs> um, we could enter the Slaver's, Slaver's Fort, Fort Great Hall. Uh, we could view the Punishment Wall. You arrive at the Slaver's Fort. There are many men and slaves here. The fort is guarded by an array of slavers and slave soldiers. And all around you see rich merchants and petty lords bargaining for slaves. What does it take to paraform? Magic! At least that's the one time, the, one, the way I did it previously was magic. We got this? No, we don't. <laughs> no, wait, we really, really don't got this, Thalfon. We'd have to train them, Leroy, which costs money. But we can enter the slaves' fort. You enter the great hall of the slavers' fort, and the room is full of slaves. Hard at work, cleaning, maintaining the hall, which itself is a marvel to behold. In the center of the room, the slaver master sits menacingly on a black marble throne. Let's speak with a random slaver. Being a slave is not so bad. You have food and shelter and a purpose. What more could you want? I've never wanted to punch a man so hard. All right, uh, let's see what the next one says. Speak to a random slaver. I took a whole family in chains once. Children too. Was a nice payout for me. <clears throat> um, what an asshole. Uh, we could watch a slave brawl. Slave master calls two slaves and orders them to fight. And the court uh, crowds around, and two slaves spend no time waiting before charging into each other violently. Um, Sir Banwin the Decrepit and Dator the Chain, uh, they begin punching each other. Uh, the fighting finally, uh, is over, and the winner of the fight is Dator the Chain. It's very, very, very triple-A, high-end graphics, Sir Niv. Exactly. Uh, we can talk to the Slave Master. You approach the Slave Master. What is your name? What is your purpose? What is your favorite color? 
Um, you approach the slave master and he greets you coldly with a gaze that feels almost penetrating. What is your name? My name is not Column Knowledge, nor shall it be. Tell me about this place. This is the Slaver's Port, most ancient surviving home of the art of slavery. Apparently it's an art chat. How long have you ruled? A long time, but not nearly long enough. What do you do here? I maintain order. Slavers can be trouble. Egotistical, narcissistic, and violent. There have been wars in the past, but not now. Now we have order, just as the slaves are beneath slavers. They are beneath me. Door or face? <laughs> I mean, you guys can rate the faces on how ugly they are. Um, can I hire some of the slaves? Buy them outside, not in here. This is my great hall, not a bloody market. Offer to buy the slavery operation 85500 Wow, actually, that's, not, that's pretty cheap. It's been way more expensive in other runs. I could tell him to close the fort down and he'll just laugh at me. Um, I don't really want to buy slaves. Not really, even though they're cheap. It just, I don't like it. I, I don't do that in games. Uh, we're going to go, um, hmm. I think we're going to go recruit actual soldiers. What is the punishment wall? Oh, it's just full of like people hanging from the top of the wall and it's kind of got some pixel art and it says, people are thrown up the thing. Blah, 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 blah. But the savings, but, 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 but. I'd much rather hire soldiers. Look at hiring soldiers. Uh, 74 gold each per soldier. How much to hire peasants? 25 gold per peasant. You're right. The savings are pretty good right now. Not going to lie. Goblin, they're the same price as goblins, though. I will hire the 71 goblins. Uh, the goblin slaver... Of course. I'm hiring goblin slaves. The goblin slaver brings forth requested goblins and breaks their chains and pointing at you, saying, This is your master now. <clears throat> we now have hired a bunch of uh, goblins. Test received. Um, we have a vile force of goblinness. All right, I think I'm going to go visit the Royal Bank. And uh, I'm going to make a deposit. We're going to deposit 10,000 gold coins in the bank. Because I might get robbed. Um, then we're going to go back to recruit... Uh, actually, let's go to... Is it other buildings? No... Uh, what do I want to do? I want to... Let's go to Kingdom Upgrades. Let's go to Productivity Buildings. Let's go to Income Buildings. Uh, I could build Tribute Boxes. We're going to make uh, Tribute Boxes. We're going to make bigger Tribute Boxes. Um, and that's all I can afford. <laughs> uh, let's back out of that again. Let's go back to higher units. Let's go to higher soldiers. One, let's just say 10. 140. One, 10. One, 10. One, 10. Let's do 12 more. All right, now I don't have much money to, to lose. And then the last thing I would like to do before we end this turn is I'm going to go arrange diplomacy. Um, I'm just going to look at the bandit groups. There's the wild soul hunters, the purloying diminished. Okay, so let's, let's look at the basic bandit situation. Uh, okay, it's, it's pretty infested with bandits. Let's look at the first group, the wild soul hunters. I, okay, so I can't actually ask their, their stats without risking losing my dude, which I don't really want to do. So we're just going to end the current year. And now we decide who we attack. Um, I think we should skirmish with one of the groups, and holy fuck, that's loud. Let's skirmish with... Uh, chat, five, six, seven, eight, or 9. Who should we skirmish with? Hey, you can't do that. Not not unless you have a bajillion dollars, Brog. Uh, 
Uh, if I take it out of the bank, we might lose it in between years, and I'd rather accrue interest on it. I'm not... I'm just for reference, I'm not attacking any of the independent nations. I'm seeing a couple... I'm seeing a bunch of sixes. We'll go after this. The, uh, the Purloin Dastinch Chogst. Uh, General Gorhin Pickner, uh, says the purloining Dushin's hogs are a group of cowards. It shall be my honor seeing them to death, my orb. Um, let's raid them. Uh, let's send every, uh, let, let's send half of the troops. My orb, do you wish to watch the battle take place or just hear about it afterwards in the battle reports? Of course I would like to watch. I mean, come on. <clears throat> A great night storm shrouds the battlefield. Do you wish to launch the attack or wait a while in hope of a more favorable weather? Um, do we, do we launch the attack or wait a while, chat? Oh, did you just buy the game, Claiborne? <laughs> Don't forget to leave a review. Very important. You'll get a response from the dev. And tell him I sent you. Uh, wait for better weather? Okay. After waiting a while, the weather changes and your troops prepare. And a crescent moon adorns the battlefield before two armies clash. 25% raid. Defense strength bonus for... Oh, wait. What? They get a, they get a, bo they get a bonus. Uh, beneath the half moon, your army marches out to meet their moonlit opponent, and a few of your men appear to break ranks. But it's a trick, luring the enemy out of formation, and your men charge forward. Ten percent initial battle strength. Yay! <laughs> Both sides push forward, but find themselves momentarily have evenly matched, and the fight continues. So they lost, uh, what, 16? They, we, have, we outnumber them, though, so, so this, this seems okay. Uh, they, they managed to push our forces back a little bit, slightly outfighting them. You managed to push the hogs back a little bit, slightly outfighting them. Above the raging battlefield, a huge flock of birds passes, each of them holding rocks and stones of all sizes, one of the one directly above the battlefield, and they release many hundreds of rocks come pelting down on the battlefield below. Uh, in a feign withdrawal, you manage to get the, the hogs to move out of their better position before turning back and attacking. No one side can take advantage, but both fight on with equal force to attempt to crush the other. Uh, the two sides fight, but neither seems to gain an upper hand. Both fight on. Wow, they're taking out so many of my goddamn peasants. At least they were cheap. Um, the, the hogs manage to form an effective pincer and overrun your opponent's flanks. How? There's 12 of them. Your fighting rages on, but no one gains advantages, but they're all dead, so... Uh, the raid was a success, and your troops begin to loot every single coin they can get your, their hands on. Um, your men find nothing to loot from them, but their, land, their lands are bare. Um, well, great. <laughs> um... Uh, the Perlong Dishits Hogs lost 155 troops in the battle. You lost a total of 174 troops in the battle. Uh, 297 troops survived the battle. Well, we won, so I wouldn't actually say it was terrible. Uh, we just didn't gain any. Um, okay, so we can uh, pay some egghead to create a fancy battle report with percentages. <laughs> uh, we're going to stop viewing the battle reports. Uh, my orb, the rebels have launched an assault against us. Uh, do you want to watch the battle take place? Uh, obviously. Yeah! You have 338 men and five lands, and your men are, are spread equally across the lands, so you have 82 uh, defenders to guard this one. Um, 
A windy night sweeps the battlefield before two armies clash. Low likelihood of weather events during the battle. Through harsh winds, the rebels charge forward in an aggressive manner. Plus one initial battle strength for the rebels. And uh, they brought 573 fucking dudes. Uh, oh, boy. Uh, you fight and gain a small monetary momentary advantage over the rebels. The rebels manage to form an effective pincer and overrun your flanks. And uh, the skirmish launched against you succeeded. Uh, defend and your defending fighters are no more. Rot row. Um, with the battle over, you are brought a battle report. I don't want to see this battle report anymore. My orb. Uh, the the Dushan's hogs have launched an assault against us. Uh, do you want to watch the battle? No! Yes. Uh, low likelihood of weather effects. Twenty-five defense. Um, for us. Um, amidst the pouring rain, a lone unit charges forward, and soon an entire formation of, of hogs follows behind. There's 61 of us versus 108 of them. The two sides fight, but neither seem to gain an upper hand. Uh, the two forces clash and attempt to outflank each other. However, no one side appears to have the upper hand. Uh, in the midst of battle, in the midst of the chaos, uh, a small whistling sound can be heard, and then suddenly a huge blob of slime crashes down into the battlefield. It's unclear where it came from, but it hits hard. Well, um, the fighting rages on, but no one gains an advantage. Uh, you manage to take both of the enemy's flanks, uh, trapping them momentarily and doing damage before they pull back. Uh, both sides push forward, but find themselves momentarily evenly matched. We're fucked. <laughs> uh, the hogs fight forward and gain a small momentary advantage against your forces. Um, we lose 96 gold. Word reaches the storm mage hater. A local troublemaker has formed a bandit cult gang within your lands. And they are called the Faceless Red Cloaks, and they uh, say that they will crush you. You receive a report of the ongoings of last year. You can read through it in detail. Uh, look at a more simplified version, or create and view your own custom report. Uh, let's, let's read through the advanced report, okay? <clears throat> Kingdom report. Uh, we receive uh, 61 gold in rents, 906 gold from gambling tax, 2,629 gold from general tax, 1,339 gold from tributes from the goblin slaver, and your peasants earn you 159 gold from this year's harvest. Uh, trade, ooh. Okay, so trading with these guys was good. Gotta, just just got to say that. Um, trade of caravans uh, from the, from Lexor, uh, Lex Luther, <clears throat> um, earn you uh, 353 gold. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, you've earned 25 gold in interest uh, from your 10,000 stored gold. It wasn't that much. Uh, we enlist 23 soldiers from your five lands. Your knights train 20 peasants into soldiers and nine peasants perish of overexhaustion uh, in the ha longer harvests. Uh, we pay people. Uh, a raid uh, pillages 96 gold. Uh, mournful man attempted to raid... The mournful men attempted to raid you, but ended up gaining... Getting chased off by angry peasants, and your defense palisades managed to prevent three raids from happening. A uh, strong mage eater, the troublemaker, forms a group, yada yada. Militia, uh, the militia recruits, so these are evil guys. Uh, the black markets provide five troops to Fenor's Horde, great. Um, the general bandit level has risen, and new folk have turned into bandits, and the new level is 85, that's horrific. Um, Jorah the Wispy Armsman defeated Igelf, obviously. And uh, Globelandia raided the lands of the Dushan's Hogs. We got defeated in a skirmish. We got attacked in a... They re got raided by the, the Hogs. And the clan lag lands of the Deep Homunculi attempted to raid the lands of Gormungan, but were uns unsuccessful. Gormungan attempted to raid the, laid, raid the lands of Lexor, but were unsuccessful. And uh, the treasury increased by 4,960 nice gold. Uh, and your bank has increased by 25 gold in interest. This reminds you of your BBS days. It's kind of that vibe, yeah. Oh. Move on. And that's year one. Chat room, I've been streaming for ten and a half hours. I'm hungry. I think it's time to save, and we will uh, pick this uh, game up tomorrow. But we will obviously play through um, turns quicker going forward. 
Um, this save file is going to be called orb. Orb.txt is saved. That was one year of 50. Although, admittedly, we played through it really slowly, but you can absolutely play through it faster. And uh, we're going to quit the desktop. 